Hi, Ken from MakeTech here. In this video, we're going to have a look at a 3D printed vacuum work holding system I've developed. I've decided to release the intellectual property and it's useful even if you're just using vacuum work holding that doesn't have 3D features. And it's, yeah, it's something to know about even if you're not necessarily going to implement this technology. So let's dive into it and see what I've done with this project. Let's take a look at these CAD renders. The first one is a self-centering sprung-loaded collet style device designed for round stock that's just been straight cut. Then the next two units have 3D features specific for the parts that were being produced. This setup is designed to produce three finished units per cycle. The parts being produced on this vacuum work holding system had a particular aesthetic that I was trying to achieve where the machining patterns would be visible on the part and it wouldn't be polished off. So for that reason, it's got to consider how the part would be manufactured and how it'd be held so that you don't have any tabbing and other uh, sort of blemishes visible. So for that reason vacuum work holding was a good choice for this project and because I already had vacuum work holding on there for the second op on part one and part two then I already had vacuum set up so that was a reason why I, uh, it was useful to have another vacuum uh, pod or module for uh, OP1 which is that self-centering collet style device and that normally that would be uh, better replaced with just a standard vice of any sort um, and yeah that's you know it's obviously a well-proven method although the conveniency of just turning the vacuum on and off and then the part locking into place is very useful and the, the ability to set up a robot to feed parts in and out is uh, really great with vacuum work holding as well so that's something else to consider. Let's take a look at the parts I've used in this vacuum work holding system. I'll just put up a cart from the supplier that I've used for the parts here and that'll give you an idea if you're in Australia then uh, process systems are pretty good and for the rest of the world you can just use that as an example and then find your preferred supplier and go from there. So basically it has a vacuum generator, that's the key ingredient I guess you could say and that just works by feeding it pressured air and that creates a vacuum on one port and then you have the exhaust port that will blow out anything that's pulled into the vacuum and anything you've fed into it from the air compressor and yeah there's a trick actually you can do where you run a hose off that exhaust and then if you just have that going out with nothing on the end it'll just work unrestricted nicely and then if you want to take that a step further you can put a muffler on the end of that hose as well and generally if you're using coolant um, as in cutting fluid you would want to have that feeding back to somewhere where it'll eventually drain back into your cutting fluid uh, reservoir so that you don't lose cutting fluid if it goes into the vacuum work holding. So the way I've got this set up is a vacuum generator and then just before that I have the needle valve which allows me to control the flow that feeds into it and as I'm about to demonstrate after this, winding that in to be less than 100% actually gives you more potential uh, vacuum. So you can increase the amount of vacuum you get and decrease the amount of air you're using from the air compressor at the same time. So that's really awesome. Then the connection that goes from the vacuum generator to the vacuum work holding, I put a T in there and branch that off to the vacuum gauge that I've put up that's easily visible on the front of the machine so I can make sure I'm not losing vacuum while the machine's running and that is actually fairly important so I think you either need to have a vacuum gauge and or a sensor with an alarm that uh, maybe causes a feed hold or even just an audible alarm so a human can intercept and see what's going on. 
Video showing the vacuum changing with the different uh, airflow into the vacuum generator with the needle valve. So, just to make it grab, put a little bit of pressure on there. As you can see, that's gone up to about 11 psi. That's with full airflow. So now I'll just wind that in, and you'll be able to maybe hear the vacuum change as I wind it in. Yep, so I've increased the, vac the vacuum pressure a little bit there. Okay, it's a lot quieter and it's just bouncing around a little bit. I think there's a bit of um, condensation which freaks it out, which is something I need to work on as well. I think having a reservoir for the vacuum would help a lot. But yeah, so the point of that is you can see I'm using a lot less air by closing the needle valve and that actually increases the pressure um, as well so you get two benefits from it and yeah so just to show this one here this um, this is the defect part it wasn't sticking well enough and the machine was pushing it as I was cutting it so luckily I didn't break a bit but this one was clean I cleaned uh, this with the isopropyl alcohol and now it's, oh, I could just move it by hand, but that I believe that would be strong enough. Alright, I'll leave it there for this one, keep it pretty short. It's more of a conceptual idea demonstrating that it does work rather than a how-to, but if there's enough interest in this, I can do a how-to video and put up some models for people to download and try out. So let me know what you think in the comments, and if you found this useful or entertaining, please consider subscribing and I'll catch you in the next video.